Well, hello, folks. It's nice, clear, really clear out, and it's relatively warm for the middle of winter here in Connecticut. It's I think it's probably zero Celsius, maybe a little above Celsius, maybe a little bit above. It's probably might be 35 degrees. I don't know. It's uh, but anyways, that can only mean one thing: the moon's out. Yes. <laughs> So I am trying to image, or I am imaging, uh, the Flame Nebula, the Flaming Star Nebula, which is uh, IC405. I've already got some red on it from uh, earlier in the week, but it's, like I said, the moon's out, and I'm using uh, the narrowband HA uh, filter for it. I'm not... You know, I, I don't know if I'm going to use these uh, images. It's, they're coming in really, really sharp. But um, like I said, it's 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 pretty close to the moon. Usually they say like 60 degrees, and I'm within 60 degrees, so I'm pushing it. But we'll see. Since it's so nice out, I'm also doing something else. I've actually got my tripod set up with the Sky Guider Pro, and I've got the my Canon uh, T3i with the HA filter in that and I'm trying to shoot the all or get some uh, HA images of the of, of Orion the whole constellation uh, I'm using the, my nifty 50. I did this a uh, few years back without HA I, this was when I was first getting started and I think I used the UHF filter that I that I had but now I'm trying it with HA and I'm gonna do a color whenever it gets clear out and the moon's not out. I'll show you some of those exposures uh, later. Oh, also, I think I mentioned that I got my new computer. I finally got my new computer working out here, so that's that's great. So actually, I have another working computer. So I got two working computers now, so I can actually use astrophotography tool in the computer to run my secondary mount. So I got my main imaging scope in here with the new computer. And now I've got a, a, a free other computer. I'm not using it tonight because this is just a test to see if, see if it works. I'm not even sure I'm going to be getting good Orion exposures. As I said, this moon's uh, pretty bright, but we'll see. Well, hello. Sorry about not being able to show you this in the field. Uh, this is what the single exposure with my DSLR looked like. And this is a little bit more red than it appeared on my camera. Here's... Here's another version that more closely resembled what it looked like on the camera. And you can see Barn, Barnard's loop is visible. So is the horse head area and Orion, of course. Doesn't look all that good though. This is what it looks like after it's stacked, it was stacked. So that single exposure, that was a 60 second exposure. Now this was 45 minutes stacked. I used DSS to stack it. Um, and you can see, again, Barnard's Loop, Orion, of course, and the horse head area. And then I brought it into PixInsight, did automatic background extraction, and that got rid of um, a lot of that uh, exposed area over in this region. That exp the, the moon was about where my cursor is, or maybe a little off the screen, but it was in this direction. That's why it's so much more you know, red over in this area. So that's what that's why I was afraid. You know, I was really close to this uh, nebula. So I was, I'm, I was, this was a test. I'm not sure how well I'm, how well it would came was going to come out. Uh, anyways, what I did next was I, I extracted the red channel because this was again my DSLR. And I was just capturing HA, so I just really just wanted the red channel. And this is what came out of the red channel. And again, it, uh, it, there's more detail. It's much more detailed, just the red channel. So that's, that's promising. And then I brought it into Photoshop and used uh, Gradient Exterminator on it. And that actually, you know, made it not too bad. Again, I don't know if it's good enough for me to use. I'm going to, I need... Certainly a lot more images. Let me just zoom in. You can see all the noise in there. So uh, we'll see if I use this data or not. I plan to do to collect more. Okay, let's uh, take a look at my flaming star nebula, which is also what I was imaging that night. Again, that was also very close. 
So before I show you that, let me show you the red. I imaged the red uh, using 90 second exposures and I've got about an hour uh, of red that I took uh, about four or five days ago. That looks not too bad. All right. And let's take a look at the single exposure. This is a three-minute uh, three exposure that I took last night. And you can see how that came out. And, you know, it's promising. I, you know, I'm, I, again, I'm going to take get more, but uh, we'll see what see if I use this or not. That looks okay. And here's the stacked version of that. And that's too bad. I, that doesn't look too bad. I didn't do any background extraction or anything on it. I just this is just the, the stacked image itself. So uh, that's all I have. And again, I'm planning on getting some more data. Oh, oh one other thing I wanted to show you. Here is where the moon was uh, the other night when it, it was January 6. So the moon was at 85 percent, and it was probably about within 30 degrees or 30 degrees of the flaming star, which is up here. And then down here, of course, was Orion. So I just want to show you what the proximity was uh, when I was doing this, these narrowband imaging. Okay, I believe that's all. We'll see you later.